Today, let's talk about pictographs. A pictograph is a type of graph that uses pictures or symbols to represent data. And it's a visual way to show information and make it easier for our students to understand. So if you are ready, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive in and get started. So what are pictographs? Pictographs are commonly used in elementary classrooms to learn how to visually represent information. The use of pictures can make it easier for our students to understand and remember the data that's being presented. Before teaching your students how to create a pictograph, it's really important first that they understand the parts of a pictograph and the vocabulary that's being used with them. I like to introduce the vocabulary in different parts of a graph by creating an anchor chart. First, we talk about the title, and this is gonna be the name of the graph that should reflect on what the graph is showing. Then we have the symbols, and the symbols are the pictures that can be used to represent the data on a graph. And most of the time, the picture will be something that relates to the graph, while other times they might be simple shapes such as circles or squares. And each picture represents a value that is determined by the key of the graph. Now the key, this explains what each symbol or picture on the graph represents. It's typically located somewhere at the bottom of a graph. And in this example that I'm showing you, the key represents the number one. So each cupcake represents one. Sometimes a key can be on a different scale, such as counting by twos, fives, or tens. Then up next, we have the labels. This is the final part of the graph that I am gonna share with you. So the labels are placed along the axis of the graph. This is gonna typically be on the bottom or on the side, and this shows exactly what is being represented. The pictures are placed above each label to represent the value of that category on the graph. Now, once your students understand the different parts of a graph, then it's really important to show them how to read a pictograph. So first thing we want them to do is we want them to look at the key. They're gonna look at the key first. Next, they are going to identify the labels or the categories on the graph. So in this example, your students graphed their favorite holidays and then each label represented a different holiday. Then I want them to interpret the pictures. And so by doing this, they are going to explain that each picture or symbol represents a certain amount of data. So in the favorite holiday example, each picture represents one student. Then it's time for them to count the pictures or symbols that they see on the graph to determine the total amount of data. So in the example photo, there are three hearts. Since our key represents one, that means that three students chose Valentine's Day as their favorite holiday. Then it's time for them to draw conclusions. Once they've gathered all the information from the pictograph, now you can use it to draw conclusions about the data that is being shown. It's important for our students to realize that they need to look at the key first because sometimes the key number represents a number on a scale that is larger than one. So let's take a look at this whole group example where students graphed their favorite emoji. And so just by looking at it, this graph looks a little different because some of the pictures are only half shown. By looking at the key first, they will notice that the scale represents the number 10. That means that each picture represents the number 10 and not one. And if we were interpreting the data of the laughing emojis, it would represent 50 and not five. When only half of a symbol is shown, like you can see in the heart eye category, this means that the symbol represents half of the number on the number key. So half of 10 is five, 
So by looking at this graph, I would skip count with my students to find the value of the heart eyes. 10, 20, 25. A key can be a set of any values. If it's counting by twos, then each picture will represent two and half would be one. They can also create a pictograph using data that they collect on a tally chart. In this example, our students are going to tally of how many of each picture that they find. Then they're gonna create a pictograph to match. Then I like to use a set of question stems that I keep on hand to ask questions about the graph that they created. You can also integrate pictographs with bar graphs as well. In this interactive notebook activity, your students are given a bar graph and then they have to create a pictograph to match. Now you might notice that the bar graph is counting by twos. This is going to help determine what the key should be for their pictograph. Since the number representing blue t-shirts, they would draw four pictures on their pictograph since the symbol represents two. If you look at yellow, the bar is halfway between zero and two. Therefore, it represents one. On their pictograph, they would draw half of a circle to show this. Once their pictograph is created, then they are going to answer questions about their data under the flip flaps. Now remember, the more hands-on and relatable we can make a concept, the more engaged your students are going to be in their learning. So the next activity I want to show you, it's an oldie but a goodie, and it's graphing with Skittles, or you can use any other type of candy or food, brings it to life, they're going to love it. So you can find this activity in my second grade guided math unit, but my first and third grade guided math units have really similar activities as well. So let's look at the pictures. Each student is gonna be given a handful of Skittles or you can give them their own little mini bag. And they have to create a bar graph and pictograph to match their results. Now this scale is blank so that you can easily differentiate and everyone can participate. And then they create a flip book and answer questions about their data. Now overall, pictographs are a great way to represent data visually but remember to have them look at the key first, identify the labels, interpret the data, count the pictures, and then draw conclusions. Now, if you're looking for resources to help you teach pictographs in your classroom, I'll drop the links to my guided math units for first through third grade below, along with some additional resources that could be helpful. You guys have a blessed one, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.